Hey, what's up guys? I'm just gonna be making a quick video today on kind of like what I like to bring slash my travel essentials with a focus on travel photography and videography from the lens of a person who just enjoys the hobby. I'm not doing any kind of paid gigs. I'm not a professional photographer or videographer. I just like to take some high quality photos. I like street photography and landscapes and sometimes taking pictures of uh, you know friends or family and what I use to get it done. I think a lot of the videos you find online are just these very intense, top of the line gear, multiple camera bodies, a lot of lenses, and it's a little bit inaccessible. So take this Canon 5D Mark II, for example. I used to shoot with this camera. It was one of my first professional, high quality uh, digital cameras. It's a beautiful camera. It's very bulky, but still takes amazing photos, uh, even you know in 2021, 2022. When you pair it with a lens like this, this is the 24 to 105, it becomes an extremely heavy and clunky package. Like on your uh, shoulders or on your neck, it's just very, very heavy. And that deterred me from going out and bringing this camera on trips. My whole thought process is less is more. If I bring my Sony APS-C camera that I'm recording this on, um, which is really small and compact over a camera like this, which is full frame, but potentially could take better pictures, I'm still taking the smaller package any day. I think compromising slightly on quality is worth it if you're way more inclined to bring the camera and you just take way more photos. And so I wanted to create a video just showing what I have and I think it's pretty minimal and not super over the top and show you that you can get some pretty good results with it. So let's just get into it. First off, this is the bag that I use. This shouldn't be a huge surprise to anyone else. I think like every person on YouTube in tech or photography has this bag, but they're really high quality. This is a Peak Design Everyday Backpack. This is the version one and it's in the 20 liter size. It's really well built. I actually bought this bag secondhand, so I would highly recommend you check on Peak Design's website. They actually have a really great selection of secondhand bags and this one just came in like basically brand new condition and they have a lifetime warranty so really like it i love how you know minimal it is no crazy big logos it has these two kind of wings on either side that flip open and you can store batteries in here some pens chargers and all that stuff on the sides and then inside you have these custom modifiable compartments that you can change the size and height of so really really cool and then yeah just lots of really great goodies you have the little clasp for your carry-on yeah just really well built i've biked in the rain with this thing on and it's handled it like a champ so really love this bag and then i also just want to give an honorable mention this is also not sponsored in any way by peak design so if you are peak design i would love some sponsorship uh, but i bought this up with all my own money they've just held up really well and i really like them this is the peak design everyday sling in the three liter size i'm around 5'8 five, 5'9 five, so this fits me really well and when i just want to travel a little bit lighter i'll bring this and it can fit a mirrorless body and a lens comfortably in here and sometimes i'll take the peak design clip that's right here and attach it yeah right here there's a nice thick Hard to attach it you can hang another camera on the side so you can theoretically bring two cameras in here so going back to the bag first thing i'll show is actually recording right now so this is the sony a6400 with the 30 mil 1.4 lens this is the bread and butter of my setup it's a really great hybrid camera it can take some really high quality photos and videos so i'll just show some b-roll I use it for all sorts of different applications from portraits to landscapes. And uh, I'm a firm believer in one, maybe max two lenses anymore. And I think it's just way too much. And you're just gonna be spending time fidgeting and trying to figure out which lens to use. So I try to eliminate all extra decision-making from that. This one is the 30 mil that's recording right now. And the other lens I bring is the, the kit lens, which is just 16 to 50, very compact and can take care of some of those wider applications. The other thing that I like to carry, oh, right here, iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro. This plus my Sony camera that is recording this handles all of my photo and video, or maybe like 90%. Phones are so good nowadays, they take 4K video. I often use iPhone 
video. Once again, I'm all about efficiency and not bringing anything that is superfluous. So this gets you pretty much all you need. And <clears throat> when you're in a hurry or you just don't want to be carrying a lot of gear, whether that's for safety reasons or, you know, you're going on a night out with your friends and you just don't want to shove a huge camera in someone's face with a lens and just get some more candid moments, this is great, honestly. If you don't even have the budget for a camera right now, just get an iPhone and you can pretty much be good to go. So I use this sometimes if I don't want to carry a large lens and I want to capture video, the cameras on here are really solid and I can get some pretty solid video. So those two are my go-to. I'll have some photos and video taken on both. Definitely an essential for me. Moving on to the next two items. So the next two items in my travel bag, they aren't absolutely necessary, but I do like to carry them and I do use them quite a bit. So the first item is a film camera. So this one is the Minolta X700. Really solid camera. I'll definitely make a video about this, but I've really been enjoying film this year. Got into it like a couple months ago and I just have like so many film cameras now. This one I like because it's very compact, fits into the palm of my hand, fits into the travel sling. So I really like it. I highly recommend you guys try film. Uh, really rewarding. It teaches you everything about exposure. You really think a lot about taking a picture before you actually press the button. And of course, it is nice to have a camera like the Sony where you can take tons of photos, just snap away. But for some of those more special moments and you know times where you wanna slow down a bit, this is really nice. And something about the film photos just looks super different to me. Oftentimes I'll be even more excited to wait and see what my film comes out like after it's developed over just you know looking at the photos in my memory card. So go to your local thrift store or go on eBay and look for a cheap point and shoot. I promise you, it will be super rewarding. So that's the film camera, Minolta X700. This camera will probably run you like 150 to $200. If you wanna start with a point and shoot, that's also a really good idea. They're just super fun to bring to a party or you know an event, a music festival, things like that, just to capture those moments in a different type of medium. <clears throat> the other item that I like to carry with me when I travel, until this is a battery right here, is my drone. This drone is the DJI uh, Mavic Air 2. As you can see, super compact, just like fits into the palm of my hand. Yeah, it can fold out. It's super high quality. You get some nice 4K video from this thing. And if you're going anywhere where there's a lot of nature, if you're doing like a camping trip or you're just doing a lot of nature photography, this thing is awesome. Whether for photo or video, you can get some really cool looking photos. For video, you can get some really nice video that you can use as B-roll or as like transition between two different shots. So yeah, I usually fly the drone up once or twice on my trip. I will say out of all the equipment I mentioned, this is probably the one I use the least, but whenever I do, I never regret it. So definitely uh, look into getting one of these. Controller and the drone just fit super nicely into this middle compartment of the backpack. And then lastly, just want to mention this tiny tripod I keep on the side. This is a Manfrotto, I think it's called the Pixie. Really durable, but really small. Great for vlogging when you're on trips or if you just need something to take a time lapse on or just need that stability, this little guy will do the job. And that's pretty much it. Usually in the top, I'll keep some film, extra memory cards, some chargers and some extra batteries, but that's pretty much all I carry. And like I said, again, this guy and this camera accomplish pretty much 90% of what I need to do. And so I encourage you guys all to just get out there and start taking some photos and videos. You really don't need a lot, but uh, this is what works for me. I think if I were to upgrade anything, I would look into the recent Sigma lens that just came out. I feel like that would eliminate my need for two lenses and I can truly rock a one lens setup, which would be awesome. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video about what I like to use, a pretty modest, I would say, setup for photography and videography. This thing and maybe an APS-C camera, you can pick up like a Sony a6000 for pretty cheap these days, can get you pretty much all the way there. So hope you guys enjoyed that and until next time, much love. See you guys later. Peace.